The release of Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is an absolute dream come true for so many fans of the original Budokai Tenkaichi games. Their legendary titles which were able to bring the great anime of Dragon Ball Z to life in gameplay format. And being able to achieve all of these things on PlayStation 2 hardware is still so, so impressive. It's clear as day that even back then, plenty of love, blood, sweat and tears were poured into making those games. Being able to use the special abilities, the supers, the vanishes of your favourite characters is something that is completely unforgettable and has become the testament of so many of our childhoods. I've spent many hours playing these games, but personally I spent most of my time playing Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 2. This is the title where I purchased myself with my own money. I remember saving for months to try and finally get this title. I eventually got it to myself and my goodness, the PS2 was playing this for probably over a couple of hundred hours. It's a great title and even today it is still impressive, especially considering the technology and the hardware we had available to us. Being able to completely become a Dragon Ball Z character in a game is still so so special. But of course in modern times doing that is no longer so impressive as there have been a number of Dragon Ball Z games released such as Dragon Ball Z Fighters, Xenoverse 1 and 2, DBZ Kakarot and many many others. Now while those games definitely work good in their very own rights, in my personal opinion they weren't able to scratch that itch that Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 1 to 3 was able to scratch. It was just completely amazing and everything you could really do in the anime could be done in the game. These other titles mentioned had some sort of limitations or some design choices that for me personally didn't fully embody the Dragon Ball Z experience. So that dream has finally come to fruition and that figment of our imaginations has finally dropped. Now guys, if you've played these games before, the gameplay is back, the foundation is the same. If you've played these games before, it's instantly going to feel familiar to you. You're gonna feel like you're back home. In the way supers, power-ups, transformations, they all pretty much work exactly the same using the skill point system that builds up as you progress in the fight. The more points you have, the more abilities and things you can do throughout, and each transformation is of course going to consume a skill point and the cool other abilities you have available at your disposal depending on the character that you are playing as. Now the game definitely has been modernized with complex counter systems, dragon dash variations, things such as sonic sways. Trying to explain these mechanics is a bit difficult as Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi games are definitely regularly seen as casual or more simple games, but I don't know, in my personal opinion it's gotten a little bit thicker than that. Essentially they've added a lot of movement variety to the game so it's definitely not going to be dry in that regard. The other question then you may ask is, okay it plays well but how does it look? How is the visual improvement compared to the old games? Of course, going from a PlayStation 2 to a PS5 or PC is going to be a huge jump, but they've definitely made a number of improvements in every single facet of the game. The character models, the textures of the environments all look beautiful and it will be a joy for you to play, but there is also good alongside the bad. I'm gonna give it to you guys absolutely straight. In my personal opinion, the post effects are overdone. The reason this is even a problem at all is because, in my opinion, it actually makes it difficult for you as a player to keep track of what's going on on screen. You may be confused to what I mean. For example, I mean the smoke that comes from you completing a blast such as the Kamehameha, Final Flash, or the Gallic Gun. In most cases, that wouldn't really matter, it's just a design choice of them adding more post-process effects than usual. That would just be a misnomer. But 
I do think it is an issue because of the other things that wrap up in this package. The extensive post effects actually exacerbates a problem that I've yet to acknowledge. Now, I haven't played these games in over a decade, and of course I'm going to be quite rusty and pretty much have to relearn every single thing in the game. And Sparking Zero probably has one of the worst training or tutorials I've ever seen in a fighting game. It's really, really rough and the way this is implemented is like a blast from the past, but in a negative way. When I hopped into Sparking Zero, I felt overwhelmed and confused, a feeling that I haven't felt in a fighting game in quite a while and this is including arena fighters in particular. I didn't feel this way when I was playing Storm 4, nor did I feel this way when playing other arena fighters such as My Hero 1 Justice or even the other fighting games such as Tekken or other 2D fighters. This is a problem. The best games are easy to play but difficult to master. The over intrusive post fix and lackluster tutorials make Sparking Zero a difficult learning experience. Getting humbled in the story mode will quickly show you the difference in fighting capabilities between you and the CPU. That Great Tape Vegeta fight showed me that I have absolutely no idea about what I'm doing and I need to go and train immediately. Now, for guys who are fans of the game and are, of course, being thrusted by nostalgia, we definitely will pull through, go into the training, and find the mechanics that we need to learn for ourselves. But the thing is, I have a feeling that a lot of new players will just drop off or just lower the difficulty as the challenge just seems insurmountable. I want to go back to the overdone post effects animations and things like that. Let's compare the footage from Budokai Tenkaichi 3 or 2 and compare it to the now Sparking Zero. I'm not sure if you noticed it, but I'll bring it to your attention if you haven't noticed it as of yet. Of course, we're now blessed with much more powerful technology and much more interesting effects available thanks to Unreal Engine 5. But due to that, I think the developers have actually done too much in terms of post effects that makes it more difficult to find out and understand what's happening on screen. Clarity is diminished. And I'll be absolutely honest, this is kind of an issue that has kind of plagued the entire gaming industry. We want to make everything flash, you want to make everything look cool, but the thing is, the clarity becomes difficult. Where is the enemy I'm supposed to be targeting? If we consider the past and consider the way games were designed before, it was very easy for you to know what's going on just from a glance. Because we focused so much on high fidelity and post effects, clarity and understanding who is friend or foe has become more difficult as time has gone on. Now let's hop on over to considering the user interface and the menus you pretty much have to deal with with when playing the game. I have a little bit of an issue and annoyance with the character select, it's, it's okay, but the thing is is that it's kind of annoying that every time you go into a battle, you have to manually remove each and every single character that you've chosen from the last subsequent battle. This definitely isn't some sort of huge complaint that's going to make you drop the game, but it's just a small quality of life thing that needs to be improved upon. If perhaps in the next update that they release, or the next time you head into team battle, just give us the option to hold, for example, square, or to hold um, X on Xbox to just remove all the characters on either side, just to make it a quicker experience of switching around the characters or main people you want to main with. The menu itself is cool the first time around, but again, in my personal opinion, it's just doing too much. Moving around the menu with all of these animations becomes distracting and pretty, pretty much just pretty annoying. If they wanted to do cool and flashy menus, they needed to take a page out of Persona 5 and the Persona 5 Royale, the most stylish game of all time. Despite all the cool flashy animations they add to every time you move from different areas of the menu, there is a clarity and simpleness that is maintained throughout. Separating characters with their transformations in the character select screen is also, in my personal opinion, a badly implemented menu system. It makes going through the characters quite messy. The older system worked a lot better of choosing a specific version of that character and that opens up a menu of all their possible transformations. That was implemented a lot better. I liked it in Budokai Tenkaichi 3 and 2 where you choose Goku mid and you see the available transformations to you. You choose Goku end, you see the different transformations to you. You choose Goku super 
looper and then you see all the transformations available to you. I think if Sparking Zero were able to implement some of these quality of life changes, I think it would drastically affect the quality of the entire game. Draw back the post effects slightly. A constructive training course with more hand holding in this regard. Having the option to completely wipe clean the previously selected characters, I think with those changes the gameplay will also be a lot more manageable as now playing with these games at now 60 frames per second, that increases substantially the pace of these games. We were playing these games way back on the PS2 at 30 FPS, maybe even less, so it's a huge huge difference. So with all these effects at 60 frames per second, it's a lot to keep track of what's going on on screen, especially considering how fast these characters move with Vanish included. The gameplay is good man, the, the characters are plentiful and it's clear that this is a beautiful passion project and it's cool to see all of these characters that we love from different generations all the way from Dragon Ball to Dragon Ball Super all in one great game. The story is okay but of course the slideshow presentation is a bit disappointing. But to be absolutely honest I'm not too pressed because as Dragon Ball fans we've seen this story retold so many times in every single Dragon Ball Z game. So. If they're putting less effort into that and putting effort into other places, I'll allow it. It is still disappointing and not to be commended, but it's okay. They put their effort clearly into the what-if scenarios which are quite cool and go quite deep. It does actually change the timeline and the things that happen quite significantly. Not too much so it's unrecognizable, the same things still happen, but it's just cool to see the same things happen just in a different way definitely pretty cool to see. Now I wasn't necessarily planning to speak about this but I do think it's important that we mention the price of Dragon Ball Z Sparking Zero. $70 for an anime game in 2024 is honestly kind of crazy. In South Africa that's 1,300 rand, an arm and a leg in my personal opinion and what's crazy is that even on PC where games are usually much cheaper it is still that exact same price. This is not even counting the ridiculously expensive Deluxe and Ultimate Edition going up for about $110 and 2000 Rand. I definitely do think the devs work hard and deserve their money, but not all games deserve a $70 price tag. And the Ultimate Edition would come just with Goku Mini and Broly and Gogeta which will be unlocked eventually in the game anyway. It just seems a little bit ridiculous. There isn't necessarily a visual system that is implemented that is absolutely revolutionary. The visuals here are serviceable and quite good and stylized, but they aren't going to be drop dead gorgeous visuals which will be winning best visuals for a game of the year title for example. And this is an issue that I've noticed in general with anime games, specifically coming from Bandai Namco. They definitely do tend to fleece their fans and take advantage of them because of their love for the anime or the show that they're adapting in that time. And in terms of early access, I just think that's a slimy business practice no matter which company practices it. So in conclusion, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is a cool game, very cool in fact, but at the end of the day it definitely is a nostalgia machine. The release of Dragon Ball Sparking Zero and the continuation of the Budokai Tenkaichi series is a dream come true for many grown men, including myself. It's great to see these games finally come to modern systems. But despite that, there are still too many glaring issues for me to give this game undeserved praise. Dragon Ball Z Sparking Zero gets a 6 out of 10. The game is definitely above average and it is serviceable, but guys, let's not let nostalgia blind us from being able to accurately critique this title. This game isn't on the same levels as the fighting arena games that have dropped in the past 4 years. It's no better than Storm 4. It's no better than Storm 3, definitely not even close, not close to My Hero Justice, not even better to the 2D fighting games such as Tekken 8, or even Tekken 7, or even Dragon Ball Fighters Z. If we were to take away the history of the Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi games, we'd be much more skeptical of this game, and the reception of this entire title would be much more mixed than it is right now. Now hey, I definitely know this is going to be a controversial opinion considering all the glaze that Dragon Ball Z Sparking Zero is getting, but I definitely have to keep it authentic and be absolutely honest comparing this game to the competition that's been released in 2024 and in the past 5 years in the fight genre and in every single genre out there. If I be genuine and consider the satisfaction level you're going to be getting in this game outside of nostalgia, it is definitely lower than many would like to admit. My name is Explicit Sage, thanks for joining me for another video and I'll check you guys next time.